In this video, I want to provide an introduction to the phillips perron test for a unit root. So up until now, we've been thinking about using the augmented Dickey-Fuller test in order to test for the presence of a unit root when we figured that there was some sort of serial correlation in the errors of the auxiliary regression. So the idea for the augmented Dickey-Fuller test is that you regress the first difference of y on y lagged, and then what you do is you include a range of lagged values of the first difference. So you might specify that you want the first three lags of the first difference of the first difference of y. So that would be the sum from k equals one to three of some sort of coefficient gamma k times the first difference of y t minus k plus some sort of error epsilon t. So this is the augmented Dickey-Fuller test. And the idea behind adding these lags here is actually to correct for the presence of serial correlation in the auxiliary regression. The phillips perron test also addresses the issue of serial correlation in the error term, but the form of the auxiliary regression is slightly different. So in a phillips perron test, you regress yt on, let's say, a constant, plus rho times yt minus 1, plus some error et. And the idea here is that you use some corrected form of t-test in order to correct for the presence of serial correlation and heteroscedasticity in the error term. And the idea is that this correction is a non-parametric cor correction to the t-statistic, which makes it robust to the presence of serial correlation and heteroscedasticity. Just like the augmented Dickey-Fuller test, the null hypothesis is that we have a unit root. So we have that rho is equal to 1 against the alternative, which is rho is less than 1. And also, much like the Dickey-Fuller test regression, we can actually also choose to include a linear time trend. Uh, and also, we can choose as to whether or not we want to include a constant alpha. So why would you use the phillips perron test over the Dickey-Fuller or vice versa? So let's compare these two types of unit root tests. Well, to be honest with you, the results which they normally output are not significantly different. The phillips perron I suppose, has a benefit in that you, there's no need actually to specify the number of lags. So as you can see up here, we had to specify that we included the first three lags in our augmented Dickey-Fuller regression. Whereas the phillips perron test, because it's test statistic is robust to serial correlation and heteroscedasticity, we do not need to include these sort of lags. But Davidson and McKinnon have actually shown in 2004 that the augmented Dickey-Fuller test actually performs better in finite samples than the phillips perron test. So that might be also a consideration, especially if you have a small sample. But the overall summary is that the phillips perron test is very, very similar to an augmented Dickey-Fuller test in terms of the results which it outputs. It's just a slightly different way of thinking about unit root or testing for the presence of unit roots rather. 